Hello. Welcome to the secret of Mez Red Fire. Without further ado, fire up effects here, and let's get started. Okay. Name our first node fire, and then add a sub node called flames. Then add another sub node, and name it F1, or something. Both fire and flames will be control nodes, so set the render type to none. Select our F1 node, and load in a graphic. We are using these fire shapes from the samples folder. This file is made of four pictures. We want to show one at a time, so choose fixed from the UV controls. Enter the size of each square, and leave the start coordinates at zero. This will leave us with the top left image. Reduce the time to live to 40 frames, and add a fade in and fade out, of 10 frames. Raise the Y position slightly, and then head to the scale parameters. We are going to select PVA, and enter a Y expansion speed of 0.1. Notice our fire shape grow in height. But we want the flames, to move up from the base. Changing our Y position doesn't really help with this. So let's add some Y movement. Choose PVA from the position menu, and add a very small Y speed. Tweak the Y position, so the flame rises as it should. Now select the render tab, and give the flame a nice red color. We are using a fixed color here, but feel free to experiment with color deviations. In the basic render tab, set the blend mode to additive. Okay, now copy and paste the F1 node into flames, so we have two of them. Set the delay for our new node to 10 frames. Our second node now starts, when the first is 10 frames into its animation. Make another copy the same way, and set its delay to 20 frames this time. Now add a third copy, with a delay of 30 frames. Notice the effect of the overlapping animations. Now, select the flames node and copy and paste this into the fire node. In our new copy, set the X value of our UV position to 256. It is now grabbing the top right fire image. Repeat this for each sub node. Let's also change the color of these from red, to yellow. The yellow is a bit bright, so we will reduce its alpha value a bit. And while we're at it, let's give things vaguely sensible names. Now make another copy of the flames node, as before. Keep track of these nodes, by renaming them as well. This new node will contain white flames, so change the color from yellow to white for each sub-node.
Next, let's set the next flame image for these nodes. In the basic render settings enter 0 for the X, and 256 for the Y value of its UV start position. Do this for all four sub nodes. We now have the color white added to the mix. Let's reduce the alpha for the white flames a little. Starting to look pretty hot. Let's make it even hotter. Once again, copy our flame node and paste it in the fire control node. These will be our orange flames. So rename our node and choose an orange color. Next, set the UV positioning to target the final flame image. Enter 256 for the X and Y values. Lovely. We now have a basic fire. Before we tweak some more, let's demonstrate how to export our animation. In the window menu choose the recorder option. Expand our record window and toggle the show guide box to on. This shows you the export area. Press play and set this area so it encompasses your entire animation. Here record effectively means export. You can export any part of the animation you want, so enter the start and end frames of your choosing. Next, choose an export format. We are going for a PNG image sequence, which is the export as images option. We want our images to be transparent, so select generate alpha from the menu. Now it's time to press the record button. Your animation will be exported to the directory you select. So far we have a basic flame setup. We can tweak and add as many effects to this as we want. Let's just tidy things up a bit. We now have our flames nested in the fire control node. Changes made here will be reflected in its child nodes. The node is essentially empty, so toggling its visibility has no effect. Let's now make a copy of the fire node, and call it fire2. We'll use this to help make a loop. Press play. The fire is more dense. Give fire 2 a delay of 40 frames, so it starts later than fire 1. For the loop we want our animation to start later as well. So change the starting frame to 40. Now, alter the last frame of our loop, so it matches the first frame. Let's make the loop end at frame 80. The fire is now looped. Yay! Okay, let's add a few effects to our fire. Add another node to the root of our node tree. Make this an empty control node, and give it a child. We are going to add a glow. Load in a blurred circle as our sprite. Alter its skill and position parameters to set the glow up as we want. Change the blend mode to additive and give our glow a nice orange color. Adjust the alpha for a more subtle effect. Okay, we have a basic glow. Let's also add some particles to our fire. Make a copy of our FX node, and name it FX2. Keep 
keep the copy of the glow node and add a new child. Give it a funky name. Load in a graphic of your choosing and set up its appearance and scale. Bear in mind that we can animate all of the parameters we are currently setting. We want more than one particle, so increase the spawn count to say, 24. Also reduce their lifespan to about 60 frames. We also want some movement, so select PVA from the position menu, and give it some Y speed, with a small deviation for each axis. Play around here, until our particles are nicely spread, and positioned at the center of the fire. Reduce the alpha value of our particle color and test our loop so far. Let's tweak a little more. Add a fade if you want and give the position some deviation along the X and Z axis. And a bit more speed getting there. Let's improve the distribution. Increase the spawn count to 32. And we'll change the spawn rate to every 2 frames. Not bad. As a final touch let's reduce the alpha some more. There, some basic fire particles. There are many effects we could add to our fire, but to finish off, let's add an animated glow. Add a new child to FX2, and import another fuzzy circle. Set its color to red, and reduce the alpha value. Now resize, and position the glow accordingly. When done, we want to move this control node to the top of the node tree. This will move the effects on the node to the background of our fire composition. It will also help us demonstrate the F-curve animation feature. In the scale section, choose F-curves, and click the button. Expand the new window. This shows us a grid, with the timeline along the X-axis, and the Y-axis representing value changes in your parameters. We are going to use this to animate the Y scale of our glow, so it grows and shrinks as our fire burns. To place a point, hover over the location on the grid where you want the new value to be placed. As we are focusing on the Y value, we will now press the Y button on our keyboard. We can control these points more precisely using the fields above. Start with a point at the beginning and end of our animation. To make the glow scale up and down, make a zigzag pattern as shown by placing your cursor and pressing the Y key. Press play and observe the glow. To 
to prevent it from extending beyond the base of our fire, let's move the Y location up a bit. We could also choose to animate the position the same way. Now to change the blend mode to additive. Toggle the note view to see the effect. And, we have our fire. Burn burn burn. Burny burn. With the techniques outlined in this tutorial, you should now have enough skills to make your own cool effects. So, feel free to add new nodes and experiment with the powerful concept of inheritance. Ultimately, Effects Seer is an impressive tool to achieve great effects for any project. Good luck with your new skills. Now go and make something awesome. I'll be back soon with more funky tips on how to do groovy things for free. Till then, bye bye.